everybody dr rick wallace dropping in on you hope everybody is having a great week hope you are having an exceptional day uh, it's been one of those for me uh, weeks days uh, but i'm still breathing so i'm still in the fight i'm still standing and i'm still pushing forward um I'm not going to even get into it, but for those of you who know and have been there for me, thank you. Um, look, before I get started, I need to remind you that we are in the midst of a fundraiser for Black Men Lead, uh, our Rite of Passage initiative, uh, and our wraparound services for young black males. Uh, it's important uh, to ensure that we are producing strong, healthy black men to protect our beautiful daughters, sisters, mothers, and, and, and so forth. And that's sort of why I'm here uh, today. And I hope that I am able to clearly articulate exactly what it is that I am trying to bring forth. Um, so again, show some love and support for the work we do by clicking the link in the box or you can give the organization's cash app uh, account, which the information is also in the description box. We are coming off of the heels of a young black woman in Houston who had been missing for months. Uh, body still hasn't been recovered, but there's enough evidence uh, to prove that she's been killed by a black man. Uh, and there are, and there are uh, certain circumstances surrounding it, but at the end of the day, she did, definitely did not deserve to die. And we've got to stop justifying homicides of blacks uh, generally, but definitely our women and children specifically. Um, to make the matter even worse, there is again in the Houston area, I'm dealing with local things because of how it hits here, but I'm aware of the entire uh, spectrum across the nation and what's happening. And you, those of you who have followed me know uh, that I am an advocate and a champion for protecting our women and children. Uh, despite the gender wars that are going on, despite the animosity, despite all the things that are going on, our women still need to be protected. Um, and I think that we are not doing a good enough job. Uh, here, a nine-year-old baby was murdered, shot, killed by her. Her mom's, from what I understand, ex-boyfriend, I guess she decided to end the relationship uh, and wouldn't take him back or whatever. And here we come with this emotional, uh, uncontrolled emotion. Um, and he shoots both. The mom has somehow miraculously survived, but the baby died. Um, do you know how broken a man's mind has to be to first of all want to kill a woman, but even greater to kill a child, um, to inflict as much pain as possible uh, and in and, and emotional distress, not for just for the mother who survived for the extended family for the children. This little girl literally attended the daycare where my baby sister works. Uh, and so my sister knew her. And the crazy thing is, this isn't the first child who has been harmed that has attended this daycare. And so it just goes to show how prevalent of a problem this is. And this is something that I have written on extensively in multiple books, in countless articles. I have spoke on it in probably over a hundred videos. And this is the thing. When 
I uh, developed the blueprint for black empowerment uh, back in the early teens of the 2000s, uh, probably 2011, 2012 is when I started. Around 2013, 2014 is when I brought in Dr. Anderson and his wife Joanne to look at it and give their approval, which they did, and I, I published it shortly thereafter. Um, then there's the Black Code of Conduct, which I also created, and I've asked other people to participate in developing uh, a stronger code and a set of protocols that automatically constitute what action is taken when certain things happen in our community. We don't have an agenda. We don't have a pro. We don't have a set of protocols. We just reactive. We react to everything, and then we sit up and we wonder why we're dealing with these things. I've been telling you for I don't know how long that if we don't prepare young boys to be men, they're going to come up and they're going to be uh, destabilized men, emotionally destabilized, hyper aggressive, hyper violent. Uh, because they're hyper frustrated and they are going to cause harm in our community to one another, to our daughters, to our mothers and fathers, to people in the community that should feel safe around them. They are going to be the greatest threat. We are not properly socializing young black males. We are not properly developing them early in life so that they grow into it. A big part of that is the absence of black men in the home. I keep telling you that we keep creating these situations where we don't have the men. We got 1.5 million men absent in one way or another. Uh, we have a bunch of this uh, unstable, emotionally unstable and a bunch of other things when they are in the home. And we're not confronting that. We're not dealing with mental health on uh, any real true level in the black community. And we are seeing it play out in our everyday lives. We have a responsibility to be uh, engaged. Black men, we have a responsibility. I don't care how you feel about anything. You know, there are times uh, coming up where I was at odds, you know, with, 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 with one or more of my sisters, but I guarantee you that nobody could come near them and that anyone who knew us understood that my sisters were off limits and that messing with my sisters came with a very healthy price. And therefore that, was the, that, that wasn't that problem. And same thing with my daughters, um, the same thing. We don't, until we develop a mindset that we are not going to allow anyone outside or inside our community to bring harm to our women and children. And this doesn't mean that we marginalize the deaths of like the young brother that the cop shot in the head uh, not that long ago. We don't marginalize the deaths of our black men. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that we know that's an issue and we know we have to war uh, to protect our young black males. But what we can't have is our women feeling unsafe in the presence of black men. I don't care what's going on, what's happening. I can tell you right now that with everything that's going on in my relationship with my wife, I guarantee you she doesn't think I'm gonna harm her. Um, and I wouldn't. I mean, it's never even crossed my mind. The thing is, we are failing as men and I, can, and, and, and I always get this flat when I say that because nobody wants to say I'm not where I'm supposed to be no one wants to say I, I, I'm not pulling the load nobody wants to say I have some issues that I need to work out everybody wants to be right everybody wants to say it's the other person's fault Everybody wants to listen up and, and, and lay blame and then not have to deal with accountability. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to take that approach. What I want to take is an approach that we haven't done the work. What I want to do is I want to take the approach that we are failing our children. I want to take the approach that we have failed our women collectively. Does it mean that we're bad men? No, some of us are good men. Some of us are exceptional men and some of us are pulling our load and doing the work some of us are in situations that are almost impossible and yet still fighting and pushing and pulling 
but there are so many of us that are not. And then none of us are perfect. None of us are everything that we can be. And that's the thing. That should be a, a, a seed planted in a young black mind early on that drives them to excellence. Excellence in business, excellence in educating themselves, excellence in, in parenting. Doesn't mean perfection, it means excellence. It means you're getting every ounce of your potential in the things that you're supposed to be doing. That you are literally searching yourself to be the best that you can possibly be. And I'm calling on our women to be more loving and understanding of where we are as men. Now, I'm not saying tolerate any of the things that I've talked about as far as violence towards women, as far as disrespect towards women. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the brothers who are out here trying, the ones who are on your side, the ones who are fighting for you. We're not perfect. Uh, we, we, we're coming with baggage. If we're, if we're over 30, and a lot of us, if we're over 20, depending on our childhood, we're coming with something. But if we are, but if if you can perceive that we're coming with a, 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 an open heart, a genuine desire to be the best we can in your lives, and a capacity to be a protector, a provider, a, 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 a promoter, a priest, and a and a prophet in, in your lives, I'm talking about romance and marriage now. Then make room for us, and we grow together. If you see us in the community and you see us giving what we have and doing everything we can and you can see the love we have for our people, for our family, for our communities, stand beside us because we need you. We, 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 we need you as an ally, not an enemy. We need you as a person who we can, uh, a person collectively so to speak, that, that we can know has our backs and that is lifting us spiritually and that can be the, 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 the voices of support and affirmation when we are struggling with ourselves, our purpose, our identity and the things that we go through that we can't ever tell anybody we're going through because we're supposed to be perfect and men don't need help and uh, black men don't have issues with mental health and, and all these other things. We need a place where we can come to you because there's a softness in the way you deal with us when you care about us that we need. That, that there's a level of trust that we have when we know we can be ourselves and that we can we, we, we can lean into you when we need to. So look into our hearts and see by the way that we move, by the way that we operate, by the way that we handle you, by the way that we speak to you, by the way that we speak of you, what we mean towards you, and then be there. But at the end of the day, brothers, that can be no excuse for it to be okay for anybody, to me, especially a black man, to be a threat to a black woman. Absolutely unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. We are going to have to, at some point, stand up. We're going to have to square our shoulders. We're going to get some intestinal fortitude. We're going to have to send a message out to the masses that our women are off limits. We're going to have to start patrolling. We're going to have to start being able to execute protocols that respond to this very thing. We are going to have to have an organized structure that provides the safety necessary because the less safety a person feels, the less productive they are, uh, the less they can execute their purpose and the less they can execute the power within themselves. And we haven't given our women and our children that type of security. That's on us. We can talk and we can place blame. We can do a whole bunch. We play the blame game. Uh, I, I can tell you this. Uh, there's always enough blame to go around. There's always enough culpability to go around. There's always something that could have been done that wasn't done. And so I, I, I don't like the blame game. I like accountability. I like, okay, what did what happened? Who did what? So what do we do from here? What are we going to do now? You know, it's easy to sit up and absolve yourself from 
any wrongdoing and point the finger, but it takes real true desire to be your best and to be the best for the people around you to sit up and say, you know what? I shouldn't have done that or I should have done this. I was out of line for that. Man, why didn't I do this? What the hell was I thinking? Hey dog, do you, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you. This is what I did. And, and, and then we need to encourage one another to be better. I see far too many men out there competing with one another. That kills the camaraderie. That kills the collaboration. That's a problem in our community is that we are having issues with working with one another. So on that note, I am going to share with you and, you know, my desire to do something better. And I'm going to figure out what I'm going to give outside of the codes and everything, what I can give to this thing so that I can be a positive contributor at, at and above what I've already done. And I want to challenge everybody to do the same thing. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Look, click that box and give because that socialization program is a big part of how we empower and properly socialize young black males through rite of passage. Every other uh, high-performing race or group has some sort of rite of passage except us. This needs to be a universal, national thing that we literally are doing with our kids. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day, and we will talk soon. I'm out.